It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. And good morning and welcome to Monday's Travel and Cruise News Podcast. It's the eighth day of April. Come to Marietta, Ohio. On a kind of a cloudy, uh, yucky day. Folks, I'm not 100% sure on how the Wi-Fi is going to work. It has not been... It hasn't been bad, but it has, it's been spotty. So I hope the show will go over because I'm doing it today and tomorrow here. So we'll just have to play it by ear and see how it goes. All right. We do have a number of news stories this morning. The lead story for the day, uh, several of these stories are from over the weekend but a passenger with dementia is missing in Cozumel. American coastal ship sell for pennies on the dollar. Juno limits passengers. Princess Brightline announced a partnership. I was involved in that uh, announcement Friday afternoon. That was, uh, that was pretty cool. Norwegian escaped to arrive late in New York City this morning. Baltimore hours has port reopening in April. And the ambiance was involved in the Cape Town incident. That and lots more here at 8 o'clock this morning. I saw that Kenneth was up bright and early. Before I went over to the program. Today, folks, National Zoo Lovers Day. Now, I realize that everybody's going to be tied up with eclipsing for a bit of the day. So you're not going to even think about going to the zoo. I understand that. Um, Maybe you want to plan a trip to the zoo sometime today. That wouldn't be a half a bad If you're listening by, you can always access the podcast via my blog, which is access.net, or wherever you get your podcast from. All the, uh, uh, all the search for travel and cruise industry news, and up pops the fat travel guy. Anytime you're listening, if you ever want to jump over to the video, there's always a link in the uh, description of the podcast. So you can do just that in case you want to take a look at pictures or clips or interviews that I might be using in today's show. So uh, just a couple quick announcements the news this morning, folks. Uh, uh, yes, I'm still planning uh, on going to this. It's actually Gretchen's son house, son's house in Kent, Ohio. Uh, I should be there about noon today. I'll see how my timing goes, how the traffic is. Uh, a lot of the things that I keep hearing is how going to be, you know, this morning and tonight. So we'll see. Uh, but anyway, going up to to and Fred and and some of their family and to witness the eclipse. I've got a couple pair of glasses, one for me and one to put it on my phone so I can take some pictures. I don't even know if you have to do that or not. I want to try shooting through through the glasses with the phone. But anyway, going to witness the eclipse. I have been one. I've, I've seen one partial when I was a kid. I've never been in a in, in totality. It's what do they call it? Uh, where, where it's completely gone. This will be a 
course for me. And, you know, quite frankly, they say it's going to be 20 years. Till, you know, I'm not going to be alive in 20 years. So this is my chance. So I'm hoping the weather clears up a little bit. It's pretty cold. And of course, I'm a couple hours south yet still. So, you know, there's, uh, I have hopes that, that uh, the weather will be nicer. All right, so uh, the, the other thing that I was going to mention that today, we've added three things to the um, cruisewithchili.com. One is, you know, we did one on the um, bliss going over from Miami to Southampton. And then it's going to dry dock, and I'm going to bang around Europe for a month and get back on the Bliss in Southampton and come back to Miami. So uh, that that uh, cruise is up. It's not it's not a bargain, folks, for a transatlantic, but yeah, that's it's what it is. Uh, so anyway, that's the Bliss. And then we've got uh, the Epic Transatlantic, which is um, later, uh, which goes out of New York. And it's a 15-nighter on the Norwegian Epic. Of course, I've been on the Epic several times now and have two more, I think, planned. So looking forward to that. And then when we get into Rome, we're going to hop over to uh, Barcelona and get on the breakaway for a Mediterranean cruise, nine-night cruise on the breakaway. And then uh, we come home. I fly home. So basically, folks, I'm going to Europe twice next year two trips, over and back and over. Then I finally have to get on an airplane to fly home. So I like that. But anyway, if uh, any of you want to join me, all you got to do is call me. And, uh, you know, it's the the way that they've laid out uh, uh, Cruise with Chili. Um, it's a list of everything that's available that I'm going to be sailing on. And uh, if you want to join, fine. Just give me a call and we can hook you right up. All right. So the top story today, folks, it's a sad and troubling story. And I, until I found out exactly what happened, I was a little bit upset with the whole situation. But a 66 year old. Uh, man suffered from uh, frontotemporal frontal temporal dementia has sparked a multi agency search after disappearing. Edmund Bradley Solomon, 66 years old, went missing during the break in Cozumel. Uh, Came separated from his family during a seven night cruise around the Caribbean. Reports say that Edmund, after visiting a public restroom in the cruise terminal area, while his wife, wife Mimi was waiting outside, Solomon is believed to have gotten an attack uh, once he. Uh, got into a taxi uh, once he was separated from his family and he did his wristwatch for a trip to the beach. Multiple agencies have joined forces to look for the missing uh, 66-year-old, the busiest port town in the Caribbean, as they try to locate the man as quickly as possible. He suffers from a form of dementia that causes him difficulties in communicating and complex processes. 
So, uh, unfortunate uh, situation there. Apparently, uh, you know, they they walked into the terminal there at Cozumel, and he went to the restroom, and whether he went out a different door, but his wife was standing there waiting, and he never came out. Uh, and then she sent someone in, and then that led him to get the cruise ship involved, police involved. It was icon of the seas, by the way. Uh, multiple agencies. They started doing the, you know, put out like similar to our Amber Alert here, only on this gentleman. Cab driver reported and said, that sounds like a guy that I took to whatever beach it was. So, but they have not found him. All right. I'll be back with several more stories from one of our network sponsors. Next story today, folks. Two American Queen Voyages coastal ships, which, uh, operated primarily on the Great Lakes, have sold for a total of a million nine to American Queen founder John Wagner, according to a court file. The 2001 built Ocean Navigator and Ocean Voyager are now expected to enter service for a new operator following a refurbished period. Both ships can carry approximately 202 guests. Following the bankruptcy and reorganization, Hornblower, all of the American Queen assets were off, and the American Queen Paddlewheel River Fleet was sold to American Cruise Lines. All right, there's been a fight up in Juneau about controlling the number of cruise ships in town. In a move to mitigate the impact of burgeoning cruise traffic, Juno has reached a conceptual agreement with the cruise lines to establish a daily passenger limit. The decision to safeguard the city's quality of life while uh, maintaining uh, its status as a key cruise destination. The news was announced during a city assembly meeting with tourism manager Alex Pierce highlighting the importance of this preliminary step, Juno's journey towards uh, limiting cruise ship is in response to a record-breaking influx of 1.6 million visitors last season, a 23% increase pre-pandemic highs recorded in 2019. There's a projected increase of passengers to reach 1.7 million in 2024. The City and Cruise Line National Association, that's CLIA, have voluntarily imposed a, a cap of five ships per day for 2024. However, the negotiations have not pinpointed an exact gap. Intentions are to reduce numbers low current figures with a particular emphasis on making the least traffic day. The city is concurrently in discussion with cruise lines to tackle additional issues of hot berthing which is a practice of having a ship use a berth for a short period uh, before leaving um, immediately being replaced by another ship. Downtown congestion improvements are also being discussed to enhance the visitor experience and resident life. Uh, I hate to see this in Juno, but I understand it. Juno. And you get really congested with there's when you have 
you know, a bunch of ships in there. So I can appreciate what they're doing. If they don't go too far with it and too much. All right. Uh, the next story today, folks. This was actually kind of a cool story. It came out Friday. I was actually involved with the announcement of this Friday afternoon. And that is the partnership between Princess and Rylan in Florida. Traditionally, cruise passengers have to book a shuttle or take a taxi or call an Uber or Lyft to reach their cruise ports, <clears throat> which could, can come at a hefty fee. Passengers in this is out of Port Canaveral and Fordale have a new, easier way to travel the cruise ports. On Friday, April the 5th, announced its new partnership with Brightline, high speed, high speed inner city call service that runs between Miami and Orlando. Dubbed as the rail and cell program, passengers on Princess Cruises will be able to take a Brightline train to the Florida home port which takes less time and costs less traditional transportation methods. <clears throat> As part of the announcement, one also unveiled a new high-speed train that is Cruz's iconic Love Boat branding, famous which logo and depictions of popular cruise ports. Brightline offers 16-day uh, 16 round trip transits in Orlando and Fort Lauderdale with Brighton Orlando a station directly connected to Orlando International Airport. The um, other thing, sorry about the pause in there. The other thing that that came out of this, and I really got interested in this one, it was also a name that a value-added luggage express service offering guests ultimate convenience as their bags are checked at the Brightline station and are waiting, them, are waiting for them to room upon their arrival on the ship. So you get on you get on Brightline at Orlando and you're going to Fort the sale, you check your baggage at the train station and you don't touch it until you get to the cabin. Uh, to me that's a pretty good move. I'm actually looking forward to trying that now. All right uh the um, Norwegian uh, cruise ship is moving from Port Canaveral to New York for a special one-time transatlantic position for the summer Mediterranean season. This would be the Norwegian Escape that I was on in December. Will arrive later than usual in York today. This might cause a problem for disembarking guests as the ship will not have any passengers on board. It's coming up empty. I'm not seeing this happen very often. Instead, the ship uh, left uh, Port Canaveral on Saturday. Her last seven night Caribbean settlement. By sailing empty to New York, the ship can move more and without the need to visit a foreign port of call. 
and realized that was one of the reasons, but I'm not surprised. Uh, arriving at 11 o'clock this morning, uh, the ship must arrive at 11. I'm assuming it's on time. But having the ship arrive later can make maneuver safer around ferry and other vessels. So she's now in port, but they sent for all the passengers hold off coming to get on the next cruise, the transit. And they would start loading guests at 30. So check-ins from 1230. To, and then she set the scale. At, so the escape will be going, but it's going to be different than normal. You don't have all the deplaning deplaning debarking people to get off the ship you don't have to crews have to clean everything before you can get it. so it's going to make things for the transatlantic cruisers a lot easier but they had to sit around and wait with time so or baltimore has announced they hope to get back in business here in April. They got a tentative reopening date for the main channel leading to the port <clears throat> following the bridge collapse of uh, March 26th. The U.S. Corps of Engineers is working hard on traffic. Can start coming in and out of the port again. However, while this is good news, it remains unclear whether cruise ships will be allowed to resume their sailings. Keep in mind, the important thing about Baltimore is for them to get the freight moving again. Um, and if that holds off cruising a little bit for them to get back into sound with the, the what's really Baltimore's bread, then so be it. Let's do it. A temporary navigational channel 200 feet wide, 35 feet deep, is anticipated to be operational by the end of April. The full reopening of the permanent channel, which spans 700 feet in width, 50 feet in depth is expected by the end of May. Currently, the port remains closed. So it's going to be a staggered opening. They're going to get part of it done in the month. And that might be a little more than they can chew, but let's hope not. So at least we're heading in the direction. And then surely, once they get going and get the freight moving again, then they'll probably get the cruise ships to start up. So that day, folks, we'll be back to normal there before. Now, it's going to take a lot longer time to build that bridge back. And the final story today, folks, is, uh, comes from South Africa. Early in the morning, Saturday. The cruise ship um, operated by Ambassador Cruise Line made contact with gray fox cargo carrier during docking in Cape Town Harbor. The incident occurred under challenges due to gale force winds, complicating the berthing procedures. The ambiance cruise liner was attempting to berth at the scheduled visit time in Cape Town Harbor but came into contact with the gray fox carrier which was already docked at Berth B. 
despite the support from uh, tugboats and a pilot, the cruise ship struggled to maintain the position against the strong gusting winds, resulting in a collision with, uh, with the cargo carrier. Thankfully, nobody on either ship was hurt. It's a good sign. Damage to either ship was minimal. Another good sign. They're going to go on their way and bear it on the fly. All right. That's going to wrap up the news. Let's see who's actually up and awake other than Kenneth this morning to join us. My goodness, I had 26 people here today. Uh, Kenneth, Mike, and Todd, they're the only ones that have popped into the room yet. Happy Eclipse Monday. We'll see nine in Grand Rapids, Michigan. <clears throat> well, got my fingers crossed, Todd, that I'm going to see 100%. We'll just have to see if the weather can, helps us out a little bit here. But that's coming up today, folks. All right. Uh, I've got to do all my processing, which takes me about an hour. And then I'm going to head up toward uh, Gretchen's son's house in Kent. I hope to get up there by about noon. Have no idea when I'll get back to the hotel here tonight. I'm not making any promises as to when we're going to do the show tomorrow. I'd love to do it early and get it out of the way so I can get on the road again, but we'll have to just blamely wait and see. All right, guys, that's going to be up for today. Uh, I'll be back here in Marietta tomorrow morning for another venture, a post eclipse. Uh, so it shouldn't be any different, but who knows? All right. That's going to wrap it up today. As always, folks, smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps the channel out a lot. All right, guys. As always, stay safe. Stay healthy. Think about cruising. And one day soon, we'll all get together on the high seas. Have a great day, everybody. It's time for today's travel and cruise. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner Hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.